So this is a, the uh, power plant, and this power plant has their own coal mine. That is not smoke coming out of those pipes. That is steam. That's all that is, is steam. But yeah, this power plant has its own coal mine that supplies itself with its own coal, so it doesn't have to buy any coal. They sell coal too, but most of their coal is is supplying uh, is supplying the power plant. I'm pretty sure that's what this big hole in the ground over here is. This used to be where they were mining for coal a long time ago. crater that was left from all the coal they took out. There's one right there, but on the other side of the interstates where they're, they're getting most of their coal. I'm not going to complain about like the DRZ and, you know, it, it is an older design bike. It could use more power, but at the end of the day, they sacrifice power for reliability and when it comes to a dual sport, I want more reliability than I do power, you know? Especially like off-road, you don't need a lot of power. I'm like, okay, I was just talking about, well, why do you want a T7? It's got way more power than you need off-road, but it would just be a hell of a fun bike. But when it comes to a dual sport, I, I want something, I want reliability over power, and that's what I like about the DRZ. But I just, I've seen, these manufacturers that had dual sports that were carbureted and then they disappeared off the market and now they're back and they have fuel injection so I'm really thinking Suzuki is going to follow suit and I, I just really hope they do I mean that's it's what Suzuki needs to do if they don't do it their sales are going to go way down their sales are already going down on the DRZs I mean people still like them People still love them, they're tried and true, but I still would love to see a fuel injected DRZ. I mean, I don't care, don't change anything else if you don't want to, but just give us a simple fuel injection system so you can get the new riders into it. A lot of the new riders are turned off by the DRZ because it's carbureted, they're, they're, they're afraid of it. You know, and, and they hear too much stuff where people are like, ah, oh, carbureted is just, it does it's hard to start when it's cold and it doesn't run very good when it's cold and they just hear all that crap so they're like well i definitely don't want a carbureted bike then i don't, I don't want to have to deal with all that no way but in all honesty the drz is not that bad it's it, the bike starts up pretty easy i mean yeah so you got to reach down and pull the choke out and a lot of people like complain that there's no choke on the handlebar, but I hate the handlebar chokes. It's just, it's a lot of moving parts or a lot more stuff to go wrong. You know, the choke on the DRZ is just right down the carburetor. You reach down, you pull it. It's got two settings. You, you pull it out to which one you think you need. You crack the throttle a couple times and hit the start button. And she usually always fires up for me. Now, if it's been sitting a while, I mean, it'll take a little bit, but she'll still fire up and run. But like I said, if Ava would just do a fuel injected one, I think that's going to get a lot more new riders on their bike. The problem is, is it's just it's turning off a lot of these new riders that have never ridden a bike before, and they're just they hear people talk about carbureted people that. Most of the time it's people that have always had fuel injection bikes and have never ridden a damn carbureted bike so they don't understand it. So they just knock it, they just diss it. And that just, those new riders are like, yeah, I don't want a carbureted bike. That, that, sounds, that sounds like it's gonna suck. any issues with my DRZ other than when it's cold like you just got to turn the idle screw up a little bit in the cooler months but other than that 
I don't have any issues with it. It, it runs really good. And it's very responsive. You know, it's, it's, it's just as responsive as a fuel injected bike. Like, I never messed with a carbureted bike before. I never got into the carburetor and re-jetted it and all that stuff. Like, my first street bike was carbureted. But it was already jetted and everything for the exhaust I had on, so I never messed with it. But, you know, there's plenty of videos online to figure stuff out. And you can get a shop manual. and These people really need to learn to do some of this stuff themselves. Like, it just astonishes me, like, people that take their bike to go have the oil change. Now, if you don't have time, I understand it. But at the same time, man, it's... You're paying a lot of money to have somebody else do it. But something so simple, like doing an oil change is not that hard. Just learn how to do it and you can do it in 15, 20 minutes, you know, depending on the type of bike you have. The DRZ is a little different because you have two drain plugs and the oil filter is hidden behind the cover instead of like a cartridge like most bikes are. but. It's still not that hard. Like, your owner's manual tells you even how to do it all. The nice thing about the DRZ is you don't have to remove anything to get to the oil filter like on some sport bikes. That's why I've always kind of liked the naked sport bikes better. But most sport bikes, you know, you have to take off the plastic on one side just to get to the damn oil filter. Because it's right behind the exhaust headers for some reason. I don't know why on sport bikes they don't do like a remote reservoir. I don't know where you'd put it, but just don't be intimidated to work on your own bike. I mean, if you're new to it and you haven't worked on one before, just just take your time with stuff. Like, or if you're stuck on something, just get on bike forums or these apps you know or bikers are at and get on YouTube like YouTube is such a great source these days like you can find anything pretty much on YouTube don't don't get frustrated and then try like yanking on something or forcing something in and then you break something and now your your bikes down and you're gonna have to spend a bunch of money to fix it most likely and all that stupid stuff. So just just take your time with it and like I said, it's a good idea to look up a YouTube video and, and see how to do it. And don't watch just one. Watch a couple of them and, and make sure the people do it the same way. You know, you don't want to watch one guy that does it this way and that way might not be the best way to do it. This other guy, he might have an easier way to do it. So watch a couple of videos on how to do it and then, you know, go out and try it yourself said as long as you you're not stupid about it you really can't mess anything up like you just just pay attention to the details like like on the DRZ changing the oil make sure when you change the oil filter there's that little o-ring that goes on the end of the oil filter make sure that's there you know because if not it'll buy, completely bypass the filter You know, just, just little things like that. Just take your time at it. Like, once once you get used to doing it, then, I mean, you can breeze right through it. But until you're used to doing it, you know, just, just like I said, take your time. I mean, it's, it's the best way to do it. And like I said, it's, it's not that big of a deal once you learn how to do it. It's just, it's learning how to do it. Like the first thing I did when I bought my 1000 sport bike is when I got it literally like that weekend when I got it home, I looked through my owner's manual to figure out how to take the fairing off to change oil. Cause so, I mean, that's an important process, especially with a new bike. You wanna change that oil in the first 600 miles is what Suzuki recommends. But I wanted to know where like all the push pins were and all the rivets and the screws and the bolts and everything that I had to take off to get to the filter. That was the first thing I did when I got it home. 